<laughs> Waiters. It's probably because your feet are wet. It's been four years since we built our natural swimming pond. And since we live in Arizona, it was a little bit difficult at first to get the right balance of plants and bacteria, but now it's perfect because we can swim in it and raise fish in it. Once a year though, we have to do a full clean out and it is always an adventure. It's a big day today, cleaning out the pond and cutting down all the plants. Every year when we empty the pond, a lot of people think we're doing it to get rid of the water, but the water is actually very clear and healthy. It's all the debris and the old algae that's kind of accumulated throughout the year that we're trying to clean out. As we head into another summer, this really helps the pond acclimate well to that situation and not have to deal with the extra phosphates in the water from all the decaying plant material. And it's sort of the best of both worlds because this nutrient-rich pond water gets pumped to our pasture, which helps fertilize the grass for next year and it also gives us an opportunity to clean out the pond. After four years of living with this pond we finally realized that algae is just sort of a part of pond life and algae actually is a plant that helps filter the water. So while it's unsightly and you don't want a lot of it, a little bit is okay. Part of the process of cleaning out the pond is renting a power sprayer and Kevin goes around and sprays off all the old algae on the rocks. Most people think that all of the good bacteria is living in the water, but the bacteria actually lives on the rocks in the wetland. We have three foot deep section of underground rocks where all of the bacteria lives. We spent a couple years inoculating that. And now that they live there, their job is to filter the water as it passes through daily. So while a lot of people think that emptying the water sets you back and you lose all that good bacteria, it's actually not true. The bacteria that lives in the wetland is untouched and it stays nice and healthy and thriving. And we change out the water here as we clean out all the little crevices in the rocks. There are a lot of leaves and sticks and bits of algae and fish poop and everything in this pond. So we clean all of that out and we also trim back all of the plants so that everything has room for fresh new growth for the year. Pond care is something I definitely didn't anticipate, but it's just like having a garden, you know? If you take care of it and do a little bit at a time, it keeps everything nice and healthy and thriving. As we spray off the rocks and get closer to the bottom, the water gets just murkier and murkier. And then it's time for us to collect the fish. Okay guys, we've gotten to the point where we are going to catch the fish. Actually, Ethan and Kevin are gonna catch the fish. There they are at the bottom. The water's so mucky now because we've been spraying off all the rocks, getting all of the dead algae off, ready for the new year, and um, we gotta catch these guys. Kevin's getting his work boots on. I don't know why someone in our family bought <laughs> Waiters. They're not small. Those are supposed to be the men's sizes. Like the. It's probably because your feet are wet. You can do it. Oh, good job. <laughs> You're supposed to attach it to your belt, I think. Just leave it. They're not going to fall down. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> so the goal is to catch them and get them up here in the bog. We've got this pumped full of pond water, so it's not gonna be something they have to acclimate to. Although, hopefully a blue heron doesn't come by, that would not be good. <laughs> I'm excited to watch. So dad wants to just get the koi first, if he can. Oh, they're gonna be so fast. Oh! Oh wow, you're getting good. Swim the other way. There you go. There you go. Okay, we have all the fish in here now. All right, first step is done. All cleaned out and the fish are up here. Catfish are ready to be harvested so we don't have to catch them in the big one. So you've got like a million different things going because you wanted to keep it really aerated in here, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Got the aerator. 
takes us an entire day to spray the whole thing off and empty the pond. And once we get to the bottom, we just clean up the last little bits and get ready for the next day of filling up. We've got it halfway filled up now. All right, we're almost there. Now we did try to bring a baby goats over. <laughs> but it didn't really work. They weren't really interested in running around. No. Only Willow. Willow's the only one that will. Willow is a professional mountain goat. But all the leaves and everything have been cleaned out. All the old algae from last year and all the plants now are trimmed. So, just gotta wait for it to fill all the way up. Water's not bad. We could actually swim right now. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty cold. No, right now coming out of the hose, it's pretty nice. Is it warm? Yeah, we can. Not warm. Not as cold. Still have a few feet. The whole depth of the pond is about, isn't it about five feet deep yeah. in the middle? So we still have a few feet left. It's pretty crazy though. Okay, the pond is all filled up, ready for us to all swim. Let's get in! <laughs> Salem's ready. When do we start swimming? Not till May. <laughs> oh. It's Look, a little the too cold. Look, are loving it. Nice and clean. Ready for another summer of swimming. We've got the catfish in the wetland right now and we're gonna harvest them in a week or so. So in a future video, you'll get to see uh, those, those catfish become dinner. This video is sponsored by Walmart. Walmart Plus is a membership by Walmart that helps you save more time and money. You'll get free deliveries of fresh groceries and more at the same low price that you would get in the store. And it's super easy to use. We just shop online and get it shipped to us with no delivery fees. They even have free same day delivery, which is a huge time saver. Even if you're passionate about growing your own food like we are, there. you can still get awesome prices on the staple ingredients you need to stock up on in your home. And you'll also get early access to deals and member prices on fuel. After your 30 day trial, Walmart Plus is only $98 a year and has zero delivery fees or markups, unlike other memberships. Visit walmartplus.com to start your 30 day free trial. We made your cage the best pigeon cage ever. Look at all these renovations. All right, for names, we decided on dawn and dusk, since a lot of people said that the male has like a little crescent-shaped feather on his tail or something. <laughs> so, one white feather? Yeah, one That's white feather. That's cute. Oh so my gosh. So he'll be night-related. I love dead. the name Dawn. They usually lay around two eggs per month, so hopefully we'll be having some baby pigeons sometime soon here. They have a really short incubation period. It's like 21 days or something like that. So it should be soon. We put their uh, food and water up on this thing so that uh, if they knock some of these pine shavings in, it doesn't like absorb all the water and get it all yeah. dirty. And also prevents ants and stuff from getting into their food. Mm -hmm. He has been doing a lot of things that make us think that they're about to have some eggs soon. He's a, uh, well he does this, where he's asking for attention from her and she like walks up to him. Is that really what he's doing? Yeah. It's he does funny. That, and then she immediately runs over to him. He's also been uh, like flapping his wings a lot, making a big show, so. Oh, there we go. He's too prideful. He's too prideful. Oh, that's semi food. Mm -hmm. No, I will never succumb. <laughs> I will that never succumb. They definitely make a mess. They like to dig around in they there. Like to dig, they like to dig around. Find exactly what they like. Pigeons are cliff nesters, which means they like to have like flat surfaces as opposed to like parrots and parakeets where they like to climb all over the place. Pigeons' feet are made for that. That's a little better. And yeah, now they can have a little, little bit over. Flat you surface. Is your wing stuck? There we go. 
That's funny. They like to climb around just a little bit. It's fun. Jump. It's okay, you can go down. Why? There you go. <laughs> now go up there. It's so high. Oh, she's gonna do it. Oh. Meanwhile, the male is just like, oh. <laughs> oh. oh, she's trying to get to him. She's like, what's going on? Oh. Look at that, there's food. Look. All right, the baby's gonna come out for the first time. I'm so excited. Hello. Come on out. Come here. It's, it's fun. It's fun, we promise. What is this stuff? This what grass? Is going on? <laughs> Careful, you're gonna disappear if you go too far. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there they go. Yay! <laughs> That's fun. So we've got the two little girls, Rose and Raven, and this little long pen here just for a week or so so that these little ones can get a little bit older before they get the bullied uh -huh. behavior because they can be kind of mean oh that's too You're scary, scary. <laughs> don't even care. yeah they're not they're like a lot more here let's take Salem and hold her back they're like trying to nurse from her <laughs> oh my gosh okay come on come on come on get down come on Gosh. It looks just like Olive, I guess. Looks like mom, huh? Yeah. So as the babies get older, we're trying to decide which one do we keep. Um, I love both of these dolings. The I know the one that you know is the shining star for all of you guys was Little Blair, and I know she sort of stood out because she was bigger. But Little Faye actually looks pretty good. She's nice and wide and filling out now. So um, you know we have a good contender here <laughs> in trying to decide which one to keep. So as you guys know, I've been trying to improve my skills in deciding which babies to raise up. It's sort of hard. Sometimes you talk to breeders who say they assess them at two to three weeks old and just try to make their best guess. And you have some breeders who say they don't look at the babies at all and they just look at the parents and go with their gut on what they're hoping that those babies will be like. Back in November, I went to the ADGA convention and I took a linear appraisal workshop, which is a way to score goats based on certain traits. It helps sort of improve your eye on what you're looking for. And now I can see all sorts of traits that should be improved in our goats. Nigerian dwarf goats, while cute and fun and great pets, are a relatively new breed. So they really need a lot of improvement. A lot of people will breed goats just because they're cute, and I've been guilty of that too. But the problem with that is there are a lot of Nigerian goats that have some pretty major health problems. Uh, as you guys know, we had some leg issues on our farm with a certain line. And there's currently a study going on right now to try to understand why this is afflicting the Nigerian dwarf breed. Also, when it comes to something like an udder, you want the udder to be nice and high and tight and the teeth straight so that it's not as prone to injury or infection. So when I'm looking at different traits, I'm looking at that. Like I want to see a goat that can carry its udder and milk well and not have any issues with it. So in looking at these two girls, we're going to have to make a decision on which one to keep. So my plan, as you guys know, is I wanted to raise up dolings out of the two bucks that we have, Zorro and Napoleon, because I want to see how they improve on the does that they were bred with. In a perfect situation, I would have two dolings out of Zorro and two dolings out of Napoleon. And we're almost there. If Daphne has a doling, then that will work out perfectly. And we'll have four little dolings to raise up, and then we can see which one makes the cut. And the plan is to raise them up throughout the year, and then just keep one. Just keep the best one out of all four. The others will still go to milking homes that other people can try to work on and improve, but we're gonna keep the best. So I'm gonna take you guys along with me and you're gonna help me make that decision in the end. So even though we're gonna raise up these four babies, you better get ready because we're just gonna keep one. 
Uh, it's exciting. I think this is really fun to do. I enjoy this side of raising goats, like trying to improve the breed, trying to look for traits that can make them healthier and be productive for their lives. Oh, that's scary. Scary wolf. Good morning. You don't got no milk. Hello. Where's Luna? Oh, that's right. Luna's eating. Let's see if she knows the way. Hi. <laughs> Do you know a way to go? Oh no, just gonna fight with Tatum. Ciao Tatum. That is a very big Ada. <laughs> yes. That's very big. Let me show you the trick on how I can do it really fast. Yeah, because she, she did that to me last <laughs> time. Okay, I'll show you how I do it. It's a special trick. You have your hobble ready. Try not to touch the leg. Ready, go. Oh. <laughs> See, because she's so fast. And I don't want to grab her leg because you know how they fight you. Okay. Now, she, now she knows what's coming because she's. Yeah. we've done it before. I better hold it for you. Hold on, hold on. Let me try one more time. Let me try. Ready? <laughs> Go. Oh, see, I got it. Okay. Just put your foot down over here. You're fine. Just relax. 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 I think she might get it out. That's not tight enough. Are you sure? Oh, is it? Okay. Well, we'll see. Oh, she's always the pooper. <laughs> you don't have to catch it with your hands. That's so gross. Every party has a pooper. That's go, why we invited go, you. Go wash your hands. That is a lot of milk. Oh, she, she's done. She's done. All right. Where are your babies? Just gonna look for them. They are. <gasps> There's one. There's two. There's three. <laughs> Blair always wait, hangs behind and yeah. she like waits to nurse. She's very polite. And then she gets hungry and she's like, hi, I don't have any milk. Sorry. I left you guys lots of milk. Quit punching it. Other side. Other side, run. Poor mom gets tired. <laughs> oh. Every day, Miss Pepper comes around. And I know she looks horrible. We had to cut some mats off. I don't know how you brush and groom a cat who's a little bit feisty. You know, she's a little, she's a little bit mean. Do you have to sedate them? What do you do? So guys, I feel bad. We haven't shown you our cool new buy that I got. So this is like a random little grocery store card or something, or I don't yeah, know. Yeah, definitely not a crap. <laughs> not a crap. Kevin wasn't happy about it at first, but it's so cool because now he can say this when he brings hay out to the goats. Anything off the trolley, Diaz. <laughs> hay and hay. Hay and hay, that's your choices. <laughs> Daphne's like, no. See, and then he can bring the hay around, fill all of the bins. Well, Daphne is looking pretty much the same. Ligaments are still nice and strong. So we're also checking her udder, watching it get a little bit bigger. We'll see. So yes, nothing yet, but probably this weekend or beginning of next week. Their favorite thing is when you cover them with hay. <laughs> yeah, they do like, to eat, it they do like to eat it off each other and just be showered with food. They love it.
have three eggs. So in case you're wondering, these two are turkey eggs. These are all chicken eggs. These are just blue, different color ones. And these are usually, smaller ones are usually the silkies. So Kevin's gonna put the two turkey eggs in the house because she's laid in here before. We're just trying to convince her to start laying her clutch of eggs and sitting on them. They're not gonna hatch in anything, but that will start her broodiness. We'll put different eggs that will hatch. Come on, Hazel, you're up. Let's go. Come on. Okay guys, I get way too many comments and emails and DMs about shaving the goat's udders. And while we do shave them when we're ready to take them to show or take nice pictures of them so that they can get judged, really it's good to have hair on the udder because it protects it from scratches and cuts and things as they go around their day throughout the uh, yard. So I know a shaved udder is a prettier udder, but uh, it's not, <laughs> something that we're gonna do all the time. Hairy udders are okay, it's okay. I should say that it does help keep hair from falling into the bucket and so sometimes people do it for that reason but I find if I just, you know, wipe it off real quick, it's fine, we're fine. Okay Hazel, have a good day today. The three T's, Tatum, Tilly, and Tafern. Come on Tatum, let's go get you milked. Look at that little bitty Tatum udder. Now it's a good shape, and I like how the attachments are high and tight, but that's pretty little <laughs> compared to Olive. She might not be like a huge milker, but you never know, Tilly is a great milker now that she's five years old, so. Try to hang out with somebody other than your mom today, okay? <laughs> Tilly's our little goat, but she is a powerhouse. All right, be nice to people today, okay? Make good choices. Okay, fern, fern, fern. Beautiful udder, hidden little teeth. Okay, see you later. Have a good day. All right, here we go, guys. I'm gonna make my very first Gouda cheese from goat's milk. Gouda goat's milk. Goat Gouda cheese. <laughs> Making hard cheeses is a simple process when you make it. It's the pressing and the drying and the aging that gets a little bit tricky. And I'm so proud of Kevin because he made me this cool homemade cheese press. Definitely my favorite Kevin's craft. After pressing, look how beautiful this is. Now, okay, I accidentally added the plant-based dye a little bit late. So this looks more like a Colby, but I promise you it's a Gouda. Goat's milk is naturally white in color, so a lot of people will add annatto, which is a plant-based dye, to help give it that orange color. You can definitely keep all of your cheeses white, but it's sort of a fun addition as us goat owners try to make our white goat's milk look a little bit more familiar to people who are used to cow's milk. After pressing, I have to soak it in a brine so that it gets nice and salted. It soaks in here for about 15 hours, but this stage is so important because it's gonna make sure that it dries and then ages properly. Oh my gosh, look at that. I'm so excited because I made my first Gouda. So now it's officially dried, salted, dried, now I'm gonna vacuum pack it and put it in our new cheese fridge because, guys, I'm getting serious about this cheese making stuff. Alright, so you can either wax or vacuum seal uh, a cheese like this. 
some cheeses have a natural rind to them. So I'm gonna vacuum seal it since this is basically my first time making a hard cheese. I have wax cheese before and it hasn't turned out that great. So we're gonna start with something really easy. Then I'll just put the date that I made it and um, we wait like at least two months before we try it. Let's see if uh, it turned out. Okay, goats. We've got those and we've got those. Yum. That's good, isn't it? Tilly, you can have all the snap peas. You gotta share. You gotta do a row. <laughs> so she there share. We there we go. That's better. These are the only ones interested in it. Nobody else cares. Yeah. Oh, no, here comes Fern. All right, Fern, come on. Let's see if the bucks want some. Too good? No? Okay, what about these? You like these? No? You're so picky. Here you go, you guys can think about it. All right guys, thanks for joining us in today's video. Um, I just, I can feel Daphne is gonna kid any moment. So uh, hopefully we'll have a video next week that's full of new baby goats, hopefully some dolings, and a buckling would be cool. Um, but so I guess we'll win out either way, right? So until then, if you wanna watch our time lapse of when we first built the pond, go ahead and click right here.